Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,259. Today we're going to be talking about Tech Force Foundation. You hear me talk about them every week here on Cars Yeah, a charity of choice. And one of their supporting contributors, a creative young man who's making his way into the automotive world. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida, with a very special guest by the name of Devin Pastor Guzman. Devin, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Heck yeah, I'm ready to release a clutch. Let's get right into it. I know. You uh, love cars. You love going fast. You love supporting a wonderful organization that I've supported for years. I'm ready to talk about all that in just a moment. But first, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Devin? You know, one thing that most people don't really know about me is that I really do love a good challenge. You know, if I see a challenge ahead of me, I know it's going to be a big one. I know that I'm going to go straight into it and do everything I possibly can to get over the roadblock and keep on going and keep on trucking along and getting what I have to get done, done. So where did you get that enthusiasm? Because a lot of people look at challenges and they they cower away or they don't do things in life that could lead to wonderful results for fear of, let's say, failure or not meeting that challenge. Where did you get that spirit from? Well, to be honest with you, I've never been the smartest, never been the strongest, and quite honestly, never been the biggest. I'm quite a short guy standing about only 5'7", and I've never been the greatest at anything in my life, but you know, I've realized if I fail and I learn from those mistakes and I keep on going and going and outwork the people you know, around me, I will become maybe even better or just as great as they are. And from what I personally have realized that you just need to keep on pushing and trucking along and get past those challenges because those really truly make the person that you are going to become in your life. And it's taught me so many great lessons and actually maybe come face to face with many great people as well. Well, it's a great attitude to have as a young person. Uh, you, you discovered one of the major secret sauces to a happy life and a fulfilled life. So congratulations <laughs> to you for discovering that and for sharing that today. It's it's so, so important. So we're going to have some fun. Devin Pastor Guzman is Tech Force Foundation's social media content creator. He was attending UTI in California before relocating to Florida, where he works and lives today. He's a key contributor to Tech Force's online platform, keeping us up to date on how the foundation is supporting the automotive industry. At only 19 years of age, Devin has a lifelong passion for the automotive world and for challenges that we've just learned with a focus on motorsports passion, Tech Force powers technical careers, and they are community of students, working techs, educators, industry, and philanthropic donors committed to powering the next generation of skilled technicians. You can learn more about this special organization at techforce.org. And of course, you've heard me support them throughout the years here on Cars Yeah. They are a charity of choice. We'll be back in just a moment. Turn a little lot more from Devin, but first a word from our sponsors. So give them a little listen and we'll be right back. Years ago, when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy, my carrier's rates went up, way up, but my usage was the same and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collectors Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collectors Insurance. I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 9324 and protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. They're talented 
and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. If your car started today, well, thank a tech. If that truck delivering your goods today got to your home or your business, thank a tech. If that airplane you rode in took off and landed safely, and if that boat you're riding in arrived at the dock safe and sound, that's right, thank a tech. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that great techs keep America rolling. They are essential workers and we need them. Support career and technical education by getting involved with TechForce Foundation. It's a Cars Yeah charity of choice. Learn more at techforce.org today. So, Devin, we are back, so we're going to dive a little deeper into the corner since you are a sports, motorsports fanatic. I want to go back a little bit, though, and learn about what brought you out to Florida and to helping TechForce Foundation. Because I mentioned in your intro, you were living in California. You're another California uh, uh, transplant from California, just like <laughs> myself. I just I just did it about 30 years ago. You were attending <laughs> UTI, and then you moved out to Florida, and you're helping TechForce. So take us on a little bit of a journey through that transition. You know, when I first uh, found about Tech Force, my mom was making me sign up all these scholarships for, you know, either the vac- vacational school or the college that I was going to. Um, I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go at first, but I came across Tech Force. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe technician work or mechanic work has always been, you know, something a part of me and something I really love doing. So, you know, I signed up like everybody else does, you know, on the scholarship website. And before I realized, it was something a lot more than that. But I always explain what Tech Force Foundation is, is something um, almost like the Instagram for all technicians. I mean, it's a great place. <laughs> yeah. It's a great place for everybody to get around and get to know each other. And there's so many great things to do. I mean, there's games on there. There's questions. And when I was reading upon this website one day, I saw that there was a raffle for a um, – I should go see Jimmy Johnson down in Long Beach, California. That's when I was still living there. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'll enter it. I never won one of these things before in my whole entire life of being 19 years old, even a small little raffle. So I'm like, you know what, what's the chances of me winning? So I enter it about a couple of months before. And then a few months later, I kind of forgot about it. But then I get an email from Tech Force Foundation that says, you won to go see Jimmy Johnson. I was like, oh my gosh. I remember I ran around the house yeah. screaming and yelling. I get to go see Jimmy Johnson. I get to go see me jo- Jimmy Johnson. And then that was the hard part. I was like, okay, so how am I going to do this? So I had my own landscaping company at the time. So I got tons more clients to go do that. And and I was finally able to go down and see uh, Jimmy Johnson. It was a great experience. I'm telling you, I love Tech Force from the very beginning. That's when I met uh, Mike Presido. He uh, oh. actually met me there, and she was a fantastic person. He introduced me into the um, into the foundation and to the whole entire network. And I'm telling you, that experience practically changed my life forever. And it's truly set another mindset for me to becoming a mechanic or technician in this field of work. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about those goals and in a little bit of what you want to do, but I want to dive a little deeper into what you're doing for Tech Force now because you decided to move across the country to Florida. Uh, a lot of racing going on down in the south there, which is cool. As we record this show, we just finished over the weekend uh, the uh, 24 hours of Daytona, which is pretty cool. I have a lot of friends that were there, a lot of photographers who've been on the show that were there shooting. So it was kind of like being there, uh, sitting and watching my uh, social media feeds of of all these things. But you've gone to Florida and you're doing some great work and helping Tech Force Foundation. How did you get involved with that and what are you doing? The first thing that actually got involved with is that I went to SEMA And they told me, hey, can you start recording content, you know, for us and start really showcasing like what we're all about and what are the things you can experience? So I started doing that in SEMA just, you know, right before I left, uh, actually the day before I left over here to Florida, November 2nd. And I started recording content and, you know, just talking to people and interviewing others. And they truly loved it. I mean, I remember one of the people I interviewed was Bogey and her big car review. Yeah. So so that was awesome. I was there, you know, practically two feet away from the car when it first got revealed. It was quite amazing. And then when I came over here to Florida, I was like, 
man, you know, I'm only 15 minutes away from uh, the Tetona Speedway, so why can't I go out there and just record everything that I possibly can? So I started to record. Actually, there's tons of car shows over here, too, compared to California, in my opinion. I'm like, holy cow, there's a car show practically every week. So I'm always out here trying to find the best car shows around, you know, recording what I could possibly do and trying to find the best cars out there to really showcase on our uh, social media platform. And... I mean, to be honest with you, it's great because I got to go uh, see the roar before the 24 hours and it was quite an amazing experience. I mean, I never thought I would see it because I've only seen it on TV, especially in person. Me and my grandpa both went and we were both, wow, just absolutely taken away, you know, speechless, really, to go see all these drivers, these cars that, you know, they're world class and world class drivers all around the world. So it was quite an amazing experience. And thankfully, I get to share it with uh, everybody at Tech Force Foundation and everybody following them. And it's quite honestly inspiring for me to do that because it gives me something to work towards and something uh, for people to really look at and enjoy seeing. You know, Devin, you really need to be a little more enthusiastic. I mean, you you know, (laughs) holy cow, dude, (laughs) you are, you're traveling at the speed of race cars. Um, Obviously this is something you really love and a passion to really have. Do you see, now you mentioned doing uh, tech work in the future with your career, but with what you're doing and what you're learning is contributing to uh, Tech Force Foundation's website and social media sites. Uh, Is this maybe steering you into a field or a passion that you didn't even realize was an opportunity? To be completely honest, yes, because, you know, throughout my whole entire life, a lot of people have told me I should maybe become an announcer or an interviewer of some sort because I love doing those things. But now doing this, I'm like, you know what, maybe I really should be doing something like that. You know, I still love motorsports and there's so many more opportunities than I ever thought personally talking to a bunch of people that you can go many certain paths, almost like a tree branch, you know, sprouts out here, sprouts out there, sprouts out there. And there's so many other opportunities and paths that you can possibly go to be in this field of work. And it's quite amazing because you get to meet so many other people. I mean, it's, it's quite awesome. Well, the world is your oyster, as I say, and I had a nice little chat with Devin before we got on the the show here, and he was asking me how I got into doing podcasting, and if you had told me when I started this nine years ago that I'd be talking to people from all over the world, all different works, uh, types of work in the automotive sector, and making a living at it, I would have just kind of said, no, I don't think so. But there are so many different ways to do this nowadays, and social media opens up all sorts of platforms that I couldn't even begin to dream about when I was your age. So yeah, as I say, the world's your oyster to go out there and you can create your own thing. You can do things for other people. And there's a lot of people I've had on this show that do YouTube shows, vlogs, uh, podcasts, all different types of things to support others. And in doing so, you're creating content, you're creating value to others, and you can create some income streams. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of different things. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But I'm going to back up a little bit here, Devin, and ask about inspirational people or mentors in your life. Because one thing I've learned being an old guy, (laughs) compared to you, I'm a really old old guy, is uh, you got to surround yourself with really great people. And in doing so, you can learn a lot. And you can go many places. So has there been somebody in your life, maybe it's a professor, a teacher, or somebody that has been a great influence to you? I'm telling you, there's there's two people working simultaneously, but I'll be honest, one I spent more time with. So his name was uh, Mr. Robles, my agriculture teacher in high school. And he's the one that really got me into actually, I guess, opening up my shell to talking to other people and really exploring other paths that I didn't know we were in there. So I, I met him through... Um, through school, I had his ag mechanics class, oddly enough, you know, mechanics and what I'm into now. So I was working on tractors in his class, doing electrical work and just a bunch of different stuff like that. It was quite fun, but he really saw something special in me. And he told me, he said, you know, why don't you join this livestock judging competition in FFA, which I was extremely big now mm-hmm. and, and, and truly love. So I started it and he said, you have a great voice. You need to keep on going. Well, it became the first competition. And I'm telling you, I did terrible. Um, My girlfriend at the time right now, um, she finished 120th out of of like maybe 300 people. Well, I finished about 280th. Okay. So Well, you gave it a shot though. Exactly. And, you know, one thing that actually made me realize too, like I said earlier, is I had to keep on going. I'm like, man, I can't let her beat me now. So (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) that was one of my main, main reasons why I kept on going. So I kept on pushing, kept, kept on just creating myself. And four years later, you know, I was up on a big stage in front of 72,000 people 
um, competing for this national championship. Wow. So for lifestyle judging, yeah, somewhere I never thought I would be. And I'm telling you, it wouldn't be – I wouldn't be there for one. I wouldn't be here for one for my ag teacher, Mr. Robles. He always believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, quite honestly. And he taught me how to become the great speaker I am today, as well as the personality that I have. He's been an amazing aspiration and an amazing inspiration to my life and probably one of the greatest mentors I've had. Well, you're very fortunate. Uh, you know, I think back to all my years of schooling and there's maybe, you know, less than 10 teachers I had that I could say anything, probably less than five, sadly, that I could say anything about. I mean, many of them were fine. They're just, you go in, you, you learn, but you have those few that, that stand out and they see something in you and they kind of push you in a direction. And, and my hat's off to you for going out there first and coming in where you did. And that was probably a little defeating, especially when your girlfriend beat you. <laughs> but uh, you know, as you said at the beginning of our talk, you like a good challenge. And so I always tell people that you got to try it. If you think about race car drivers, the first thing they drove a car, they probably didn't do too well. And it takes practice and seat time. And that's what everything in life takes. So uh, very fortunate to have that guy in your life for sure. You know, and that leads me to the next question. And that is challenges, obstacles, failures, something that you don't seem to be afraid of. But is there one in particular that stands out that you look back now and you go, well, it wasn't much fun at the time. You talk about this this uh, challenge that you took, but now I'm kind of glad I did that because it really taught me how to move forward. You know, actually, I'm going to piggyback on what I said prior because my livestock journey was really one of those things. I mean, it's something – it wasn't fun at the time. I didn't know anything about – I mean, I was – I lived in the city in a rural town, so I didn't really know anything about cows, pigs, sheep, or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, what the heck am I looking at? I mean, these animals all look the same to me. Well, with practice and determination and focus, you know, you really began to understand the differences between all those animals. I mean, like I said, I placed 280th out of 300 on my first competition. And then actually a few months, a month later, COVID broke out. So that made it even more challenging. Yeah. But even through COVID, I was still practicing. We practiced online. We practiced through um, social distancing, really. We had to stay, I think, 10 feet apart at our school since we were in California. Yeah. So we were in a tiny little classroom, 10 feet apart with about eight, 10 people in there. And it was quite hard to even really focus and, and understand because, you know, we're in an environment we'd never been in before. We had these annoying masks on. We had to stay so far apart. We couldn't we couldn't talk to each other directly face to face, but had to stand at a distance. So it was, it was quite weird. And we were really almost... I'd like to say the pioneers of molding what the livestock is today, because to be honest with you, we got a lot better understanding of um, certain things about the animals, such as the structure and the way they looked mm -hmm. compared to uh, people that were doing it just in person all these years. We truly understood like the real principles and foundations of what we need to be looking at, which truly propelled our team and myself for sure um, into becoming what we were. Because after those two years of COVID, we finally were able to all be together and, you know, actually go on trips. We went up to Oregon to do a competition and we placed first at that. That wow. was right before. Yeah, it was right before our competition. And before that, we were just, you know, social distancing, doing it online. And it was quite a weird experience. And after that, we were like, you know what? We like this little uh, thing. So we took a two-week vacation. I would say vacation, sort of, more of a business trip mm -hmm. out to the Midwest right before our competition, which was in Indianapolis, Indiana. So we went to Kansas. We went to Illinois. We went to all these places. And yeah, all these great ranches. And I was doing terrible. I'm not going to lie to you. I was doing terrible those two weeks prior to the competition, almost like I how I started in the very beginning. I couldn't get the classes right. I couldn't get my placings. I couldn't talk right about the classes themselves. And I was doing quite bad. But a few days before the competition, we had the hardest practice we've had yet. And that's when I truly expedited it. I completely believed in myself, the same as Mr. Robles did. And I shot out some of the best stuff I've ever said in my whole entire <laughs> life and some of the best things I've ever done. And right before that, that's really what made me almost, I would say, break through into a new transition of my livestock career, which is unfortunately about to end. But we went into that, I went into that competition with more courage, more motivation, more focus and determination to be everybody that I've uh, beaten before and to be a whole nation of schools in FFA. So that's truly what propelled me. And I almost had, like, I, I would say I had the whole entire weight of my 20,000 person town on my shoulders <laughs> going yeah. to this competition. Yeah. I mean, that was big. And, um, I went to that competition. I did it for the 
for like, I think it was four hours long. I mean, what I would call a monk m- mindset would be just, you know, go in there, get things done, focus on what you have to get done and do it. And I did that. And well, we came out national champions and wow. standing on a stage with 17,000 people looking at us. Wow. Not including viewers, TV viewers. So wow. that was awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, my, my hat's off to you and all the young people that had to go through COVID schooling because what a terrible terrible situation. Um, my uh, daughter-in-law's brother uh, was attending college and to have two years of remote learning in a college and he's he's from India so he was going to college here in the U.S. and then having to do that studio work I don't know how how any, I, I mean I think I would have just said eh, I'll come back when school's back in in progress because uh it was you right it was so weird it was so odd and i i just my hats off to all the young people and older people that were in school that uh, stuck it out and made it through that and uh, i i'm really glad to hear that story and congratulations again to you and you and your team for what you did which leads me to what i call bucket lists if you look at your career path and i don't want to go too far out because so many things affect that but maybe the next two to three years. Where do you see yourself? What do you want to be doing? Where I really want to see myself is actually almost kind of like what you're doing Mm -hmm. is interviewing all these great people, these great drivers, these great, amazing people inside this industry and truly understand what their mindset and brain brain work is behind what they do in their lives and how they got there first place. I mean, like how we asked you before we started recording, it was, we had a great talk and I truly understand what your, what your life and passion was before you had this podcast thing. You know, I thought that was really cool to really get your background work on it. And I would love to interview, I mean, my greatest hero, probably Tony Stewart. I got about 10 feet away from him in SEMA, but I could never <laughs> talk to him, unfortunately, but yeah. I would love to interview him one of these, hopefully in the next couple of years. That would be amazing. Yeah. So are you thinking maybe uh, doing live interviews or doing podcast? Well, live. We're live today, obviously. We're both alive. Uh, last I checked my pulse. Um, but, <laughs> but doing um, where you're you're there in front of people at an event or doing podcasting or have you thought that all the way through of how you want to accomplish this? Because as I said, there's so many opportunities now. If you go to YouTube, which is huge, there's people – creating very good incomes and living their passion on YouTube. I follow some that I just go, I can't believe these people are doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty phenomenal. It's a lot of work, of course, but when you're doing what you love, that doesn't really matter too much. So again, what I'm honing here a little bit, Devin, on is, is really how you see this, this interviewing and talking to people, specifically in motorsports, how you see yourself doing that. Honestly, one of the ways I've seen myself doing that is hopefully face to face, unless we have another crisis like COVID. And if that ever happens, I hope no, we're not, not going to but... do that anymore. Let's just put that out <laughs> of our mind. We're done with that stuff. Yeah, I completely agree. I have a face to face conversation or interview with them and, you know, hopefully post it on YouTube, like you were saying, because there's quite a bit opportunities on to do that and to even post on social media because it's free traffic and free content and free view shoot viewers from uh people around the world i mean you can really expedite your content and who you are and your brand out to all these people and in my personal opinion i love going to these races so i'd love to go to these races meet these people hopefully and uh have the chance to talk to them even just if it's for 30 seconds to a minute long i mean that would be that would be the world to me Yeah, it sounds like fun. Well, I have no doubt you're going to accomplish that. Let's talk a little bit about vehicles. Now, uh, sometimes this might be a silly question for young people because you haven't been driving that long. You're only 19, so three years really behind the wheel, if you will. But is there a special vehicle in your life? Man, the the one special vehicle, the only thing uh, that I owned of myself was my truck. Mm -hmm. Um, We got it from uh, my parents were doing this dog walking business at the time, and we had this old elderly elderly lady um, that they were taking care of with their dogs. And uh, unfortunately, we got to her house one day, and she was on the ground. Oh no! And uh, yeah, yeah, we were we were going to go take care of her uh, animals and such, and she was on the ground, so we had to rush to the hospital. And, um, well, a few months passed and everything. We were taking care of her. She didn't have any family of herself. Um, she actually came to live with us for, um, I think it was about four years now. Oh, my they, gosh. She, wow. Yeah, for about four or five years. She lived right across from my bedroom. I mean, she became part of us. Yeah. And um, uh, after a year of her living with us, we had to move all her stuff from her old house to our house now into a storage unit. And one of those things was the, was her truck. It was an old 1995 beat-up Toyota pickup with a 22RE engine, which – 
I'm a Toyota fan fanboy, so I loved. <laughs> I was. I looked at that car like it was a holy grail. Yeah. And I and I, I remember this was on Christmas of 2019, and I said, "Hey, Sandy, um, would you be interested in selling your truck to me?" And she went, "Oh yes, honey." She she absolutely fell in love with me the time <laughs> she was living with us, and she's like, "How about 600 bucks?" And I said. Heck, I'll do it for six hundred bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I bought that truck for six hundred bucks, and um, I still didn't have. I still wasn't the right age to get my permit or my license or anything like that. So it kind of sat in our backyard for about another year, unfortunately, which has already been sitting for about five or six. Mm -hmm. So by the time we got to it, it's been about seven years, and we finally. Uh, started doing work on it. You know, there was a few things, you know, change out the spark plugs, change out the wires, just you know, minimal stuff, just to get the thing running. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when I heard that thing, whoom, I mean, I was excited. <laughs> that was the holy grail for me. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, I finally got my truck. I finally got everything together and ready to go. Yeah. So, um, you know, that thing really boosted my uh, landscaping business at the time. I was doing that and it got me all the clients that I have today. I, My grandpa would drive me around in it when I still didn't have my permit and we would go around all of uh, Stanislaus County is where I used to live doing these yards. You know, I take my girlfriend to all these special places, uh, Monterey, San Francisco, stuff like that. And we would have a great time in it. But um, right before we were about to leave, uh, actually here to Florida, it, it literally um, practically caught fire. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So luckily we got the fire out right in time. And unfortunately, couldn't come over here to Florida. But that's that was my one uh, true vehicle. And unfortunately, Sandy passed away uh last a couple years ago now oh, and sorry but no no worries but it, it's that was one thing that i had uh, from her that you know i wanted to do as a memoriam and it was it was great to have something of her that i i truly cherished and she really loved her and her wife did so it was it was something that really holds heart holds in my heart for sure yeah. and uh, i'm thankfully now my girlfriend got me a blanket that has uh like i everybody called it the yoder because of the toyota oh yeah and uh, the yoder and then um a picture of my truck on a blanket just how it was so it that was an amazing <laughs> special gift i got from her that's so. pretty cool that's pretty cool those those are great i mean i love the styling of those 90s toyotas uh they just They've kind of become iconic, and I would imagine these days with younger generations like yourselves uh, wanting those, they probably become a bit of collectible items. They're not something that probably were that well maintained by people because they were work vehicles and so forth. But if you could find a nice one, I looked at the recent auctions in Arizona and some of the cars, the 80s and 90s cars that were selling for what they were selling for. I'm like, what? Who are these people? And uh, my son said, Dad, it's us millennials. We're making money now. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. I knew um, one of my friends had a old uh, F-150, like pristine condition that came from Arizona. And when she told me how much she bought it for, I was like, holy cow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they've just really gone up in, in value. So very cool. What a wonderful thing for your family to do to help help that lady uh, in a time of need, too. Wow. That tells me a lot about the spirit of your family and uh, from where you came. So uh, bravo to you and your family for doing that for somebody. Uh, uh, that was essentially a stranger. So, uh, wow, that's over and above. So I'm going to get into your head here and be a car psychologist a little bit. If you were reincarnated as a vehicle, Devin, what would you be? <laughs> but more importantly, why? I, this, this, uh, this question I'm going to have to think about for a second, <laughs> yeah. but, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'm more leaning towards probably a first gen Toyota 4Runner. Okay. As, as many people know, they're they're hardworking. They're reliable. You know, they're practically indestructible and will live forever. Um, that's that's almost how I kind of review myself because no matter, like I said earlier, no matter what challenge is ahead of me, I want to get through that challenge and get over it mm -hmm. because I want to see it in the past and I want to see what I can accomplish. Um, kind of like the first gen Toyota 4Runners, like the old commercials, they would see them do all these crazy things. You know, I remember <laughs> I remember seeing them like take off bumpers, take off like you know whole entire axles of cars on the commercials, mm -hmm. and you know that's great. That's great. I kind of want to embody that and, uh, you know, really go and do things that no one has done before. And, you know, I, many people throughout my life as well has viewed me as an old soul. They told me I'm an old soul mm. and, you know, the first gen Toyotas, that's kind of like an old soul car to me because it's, you know, it's not too flashy, but it's also almost on the classy side of things. And it was kind of like the first hardworking SUV, you know, right. farm working SUV. I mean, uh, ranchers could use it, you know, stay at home moms could use it, you know, families can use it from all across the world and it could fit into anybody's life. And uh, like I was kind of going on that was 
Like, I want to be a family guy one day. You know, I want to take my family on these trips, you know, get them to these amazing places like uh, Toyota, let's go places and really, truly see uh, the United States or the world and really uh, have my family with me when I'm doing that. Yeah, those things were, they came out in 80, early 80s, wasn't it? 83 or 84 or something like that? Uh, yeah, I believe 84. Yeah, 84. Yeah, 84 to 89 or 90, somewhere in there. So, um, yeah, they uh, they really kind of set the pace for a lot of the things that you see nowadays. And even looking at values of those things, I mean, you could probably pick one up that's rough for a grand or two, but there's also, I mean, they're selling for a thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 range. And, yeah. uh, you know, if they're really nice. So um, it's pretty amazing how, again, that generation of vehicle has appealed to people of, of your age and a little bit older, perhaps, that is something that uh, brings back their youth a little bit. And it's a very useful vehicle. You know, I always like to ask how people are giving back. And I can see you as a guy coming from a family who loves to help others and give back. What you're doing there at Tech First Foundation with their social media platform, that really is the way you're giving back right now in your life, right? Yes, most definitely. I mean, um, when I, like I said when earlier, when I, when I joined Tech Force Foundation, um, it was definitely a place I saw. I was like, wow, they're actually giving back. I mean, I want a few scholarships from people, but I can only imagine how many other people They've uh, received scholarships from Tech Force and how many other people they've helped expedite their careers or even truly see what they want to do in their lives. I mean, Tech Force Foundation is quite amazing to do that. And it's one of the ways that I try to help technicians or people that even get in this industry that are wondering, should I do this or should I not? And truly inspire them to go ahead and do what they really love because it's honestly a great place to be, a great industry to work for. And you can meet so many great people. I mean, when I go to these events as well, I try to I try to talk to, you know, the younger generation per se, maybe, you know, freshman year and younger about, you know, if you guys really do love cars, you know, there's actually jobs out there for you guys to really do. And if you guys don't want to work every day, this can be a great way to, you know, maybe get your creative side out of things and mm -hmm. do what you really, truly love doing. I mean, who doesn't love uh, building something of their own and truly looking back and seeing what they built? Yeah. I mean, that's how I always tell the little the generation because, you know, as they like uh, – working with Legos or doing all these certain things, drawing, it's its something that they can do and maybe see themselves doing in the future. It's amazing. Yeah. TechForceFoundation.org is how you listeners can learn a lot more about this if you have somebody young in your life. And I've had a few guests on the show who've been involved with them that are older and changing their careers, even up into their 50s. So uh, never too late to do what you're passionate about. How about a great book that you've enjoyed that you'd like to share? Oh, a, a great book that I've and uh, that have actually almost got me here uh, to where I am today is would be Atomic Habits uh -huh. because Atomic yeah. Habits, I mean, it's truly the foundation for you to start and really get your life going and really excel where you are today. Because like it says in the book, all you got to do is make yourself 1% better today than the day you were before. And it's it really makes things easy and fun to truly better yourself at the end of the year or even at the end of the day. I mean, because all that really matters is that you're better than you were yesterday. And sometimes your day today couldn't be as great as the day prior. But, you know, as long as you're doing something to help you become the best person you are, that's all that matters. Yeah, it's a great book by James Clear. Um, the subtitle of that book is An Easy and Proven Way to Build Good Habits and Break Bad Ones. And that really is what it's all about. I have a guest who's going to be on my show tomorrow, if I've got everybody lined up right here, um, <laughs> who uh, talks about that. He's an ex-Marine. He's working as a senior level manager now for a huge company um, that provides uh, raw materials to all the major automotive manufacturers, uh, aluminum. And he was talking about that. Another one, another author, he shared a book by Jocko Wilnick, who talks about habits, and he's an ex-Navy SEAL. And uh, really, a lot of this... It, this these things you learn in Atomic Habits is just about setting good uh, groundwork for how you behave in your life and so forth. So that's a great book that you've recommended. So I'm going to enable you to go on the ultimate drive today, Devin. This is a dream come true. I'm going to park any car in the world in your driveway. Don't worry about the cost because I'm going to foot the bill. You can take it anywhere and you can take anybody you would like to take, including somebody who's maybe no longer with us anymore, which opens the world to all sorts of interesting people. So what does the ultimate drive look like for you if I'm waiting? Even my checkbook around so for the first bit i would definitely have to take a 1968 black firebird pontiac gto i mean okay. 
that thing is just smexy to me. I'm just telling you that. It's it's beautiful, it's stylish, and it's just you look at it and you're like, wow, it's almost like a black stallion per se. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and where I would probably take it would have to be along the west coast of California, all the way up to Washington. I mean, I remember doing that with my my uh, grandparents when I was younger, and it was just a beautiful journey, just seeing the water, just seeing the beaches yeah. and seeing the sun just a lot. As, I mean, as long as you go along the coast, it's, it's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Great yeah, drive. definitely. Who I would probably take that one is going to be a little bit of a tough question to be honest with you. Ah, uh, man, there, there's so many great people that I'd love to interview, to love to talk to, I'd love to even just see, but this one person that does come to mind would honestly probably be, uh, Tony Stewart, my personal hero. I mean, he's he's been somebody that I've always looked up to since I was a baby. And I mean, there's pictures of me wearing a all the twenty the twenty Home Depot car merchandise all over me. So, <laughs> I mean, like I said earlier, I got within ten feet of him, and I'd truly love to capitalize on that um, on that experience to talk to him about you know. What would you suggest to, I guess, maybe younger drivers, even younger people coming into this industry, ask them all these great questions on how did you prepare yourself for some of the hardest things that, you know, came your way, especially during his driving career. And there's so many things that you could talk about with, you know, great people like that, that can truly inspire others and maybe even get other people to be inspired to follow along his path or anybody else's. Yeah, he's done uh, some commentary stuff in the booth with uh, Indy Oval uh, Racing and so forth. Uh, isn't, isn't his nickname Smoke? Yeah, T Tony Smoke Stewart. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, well, I have no doubt one day you will be able to interview this guy with your enthusiasm and your spirit and your uh, diehard never, never say no attitude about everything in life. So I'm sure that's going to happen. And you've taken us on a on a great ride today, Devin, and I want to thank you for sharing time. Before I let you go, though, could you uh, maybe leave us with some parting words of wisdom, advice or a mantra or success quote? Um, I'm going to leave you guys with a quote that I truly love because it embodies what I do a lot. Okay. I try to always stay prepared, try to do my research before anything I do. And this is going to be from Abraham Lincoln. Ooh. It goes like, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I would spend the first 40 my 45 minutes sharpening my ax, <laughs> which just shows you that no matter how long the great, the great challenge is ahead of you, you need to do your research and truly understand what you're about to do before you do it. And like the great Abraham Lincoln said, you got to be prepared to sharpen your axe before you sharp. I mean, before you chop down that tree. Oh, so. absolutely. You know, it's a, a great piece of advice for what you want to do in life and really for anybody is to be prepared. And you think about motorsports, uh, many, many people I've had on the show have told me that are, it are successful in that both drivers and team owners um, many a race is won before you even get to the track and that's in preparation so it's all about seat time it's all about preparing planning and so forth so uh there you go a uh, great quote by a great man so techforcefoundation.org that's how you can learn a lot more are uh, is there also some ways people can keep up with you um one way that you guys can keep up with me too is i post a lot on tiktok and my at would be uh devon d-e-v-o-n PG4. And you guys can follow me on my great journey over here in Daytona Beach and really see what I what's going on around here, the motorsports part of it. And I try to post as much stuff as I possibly can about um, anything car related or uh, motorsports related. So that'd be a great way to reach me. There you go. I'll put links to these on Devin's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. You can find him there. And I want to do a shout out. Thank you to Emily Calhoun, who manages Tech Force's Gen Z influencers and ambassadors for introducing me to Devin and all the great people at Tech Force that are now friends of mine. Thank you, everybody. And Emily, especially thank you for introducing me to this powerhouse of Devin here. Ooh, I'm going to have to take a break after talking with you. You are just, <laughs> you are a go-getter. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. Bye. Nice talking to you. <laughs> you too as well. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.